Is it healthy? Is it maybe the perfect zero calorie sweetener? Or is it something that we need to be worried about? Could it be used as a natural birth control, as some people say? Could it, does it cause infertility? Could it cause cancer? What about blood sugar spikes? What about issues with metabolism and cholesterol? We'll go through that all of today's show. All right, everybody, we're diving right into today's show, controversial topic, the truth about stevia and why this sugar alternative, zero calorie sweetener, keeps coming back into the news and on social media. I'm going to link up, though, all of the specific research at stephencabral.com slash 2846. You can go check it out right now. So stevia is widely used around the world, but it's debatable about exactly where it came from, who's been using it the longest, but we do know that most likely in Paraguay, in South America, it's been used for at least 400 years. So we've got that specific amount of information on it, which is great. So we have a starting point, hundreds of years in use. It's a natural plant. So Stevia uh, rubidiana is a specific herb that comes from nature. Now, it's noted as a zero calorie sweetener. So that's kind of what people are using instead of sugar. And it, can, it contains two parts. All right, this is important. So steviocides is one of them. So steviocide, just think of it that way. Now, some people pronounce stevia, stevia. You can pronounce it however you'd like. That does not matter to me. So pronounce it stevia or stevia. I like to say stevia because it's a vowel, one consonant, two vowels. So anyway, I'm just pronouncing it phon phonetically, but you can, kind of, you can pronounce it however you'd like, right? So uh, rubidocide, rubidocide A is the second part to it. We'll be referring to that as Reb A. It's just much easier to say. Now, interestingly enough, though, you can have stevia because you just you can chew on the plant. There's no doubt about it. And we have recorded history: people chewing on the plant as a sweetener may help with microbes in the gut, may help with things like parasites, may help with things like Lyme disease. But I'm not going to go over like dramatic benefits today. I just want to dispel some myths. Now, the interesting part is when you see Reb A or side A, what we're really looking at is a much more potent sweetener. So the steviocide is 250 to 300 times sweetener, and the uh, Reb A is about 300 to 350 to 450 times uh, sweeter. So pretty impressive, right, than regular sugar. So you need very little. Here's the issue, right? Because if we were just talking about the plant, we wouldn't really be in these discussions. But what we want to discuss is there's a difference between stevia and all of the different stevia companies out there that use cornstarch, corn starch, other bulking agents, all sorts of fillers, sugar alcohols, erythritol, xylitol, which you might say is okay to mouthwash with or chew with gum, but not really to swallow, right? So that can be causing a lot of negative inflammatory issues in the body. So when you're looking for something, it's also how is it packaged? You know, I've shared this before with even a multivitamin. People will put all sorts of genetically modified inulin and different things in that. You have to be careful with that, right? So you want to make sure that you have a non-GMO product, that it's GMP, like all these good things. But that's neither here nor there. So we do want to, we do want to uh, disassociate from negative foods in general. For example, wild salmon can be a really healthy food. Farm-raised salmon, not so much, right? You can look at corn. All right, well, organic corn not really bad for you. You want to look at GMO corn, not good for you. So I just want to note, there's stevia, the clean version, and then there's the adulterated version that you can find from, I don't want to name companies, but you know the companies that make up the names for stevia. It's no longer really stevia. It's, um, we'll just say it rhymes with uvia and those types of things. Not so good. I wouldn't use those. Now, Having said that, I still don't believe that they're causing anything beyond these possible side effects. And the research backs it up. So let's go over it now. So stevia's possible side effects are bloating, nausea, dizziness, or sometimes numbness, like in the mouth. And so why does that matter? Well, they're all food sensitivity reactions. Now, all foods you can be sensitive to. This is for a small fraction of the population that would get these. But if you get bloating, if you get nausea from using stevia, it might be the dosage, how much you're using. We'll talk about that. But it also might be, yeah, you're sensitive to an herb, stevia. So 
Many people are sensitive to many different herbs. Stevia could be one you're sensitive to. So we just kind of want to keep that in mind, all right? So that is absolutely possible. Now, those are the known side effects. Happens at a small percent of the population. Now, I saw this wild claim online, wild claim. So I felt like I'm not going to call anybody out, but I feel like I need to do a show on this. So somebody was saying that they don't use stevia because it actually acts as birth control and causes infertility. And I said, like, that's unimaginable. How did this person get this information? But I like to keep an open mind. So I say, you know what? Let's go online and research this. How is it humanly possible that stevia, a natural herb, could, be, could act as birth control? Because there's no herb in the world that we know about that actually prevents pregnancy. None that I've seen, like without a doubt, I know things that can be you know, cytotoxic, et cetera, but nothing that I've ever seen. Like that would be very interesting, but we don't know of anything because it would be used mass market if there was actually something that did that. But anyway, okay, so here's where it came from. I, and this is why it's so, just be careful getting all your information from social media and these little head flines and people pointing to a study where they do that fun little thing where they're like, you know, three dimensional over the flat uh, study in the background. Be careful when people show the different highlighting. Here's the study. So Professor... Joseph Kruk of Purdue, Purdue University performed a study using rats in 1968. He fed the rats stevia enormous quantities by any human standard, like tablespoons, right? And they produced fewer offspring than the control group. And I'm going to link, link up the study. However, the study has been described as having dubious scientific methodology and multiple studies attempting to replicate its findings failed, which means it can be a one-off study that this showed. But not only that, the actual professor of the study later admitted that the rats' lower fertility rates may have resulted from being overdosed on this chemical compound, right? Because what he did was he actually used one part of it in not a human-based fashion and overloaded them with it to see if it would affect fertility. Anything in the entire world can be a toxin at the right dose. Okay, so not only should you not believe that this causes infertility, I would be very careful also pretending that it acts as birth control because if you believe that and you weren't intending to get pregnant and you thought stevia was going to prevent it, that's what you need to be careful with social media. Okay. The other part is this, is that one of the reasons there's infertility is there's a lot of issues with blood sugar dysregulation and hormones. And I'm not saying that you should use stevia to fix that, but certainly cutting back on some of the sugar and a lot of the starches, maybe even going more to vegetables and using a stevia instead of sugar in the coffee. Well, maybe, maybe uh, that might actually be beneficial. Okay. The next one, stevia causes cancer. Another wild claim because there's so many um, studies out there. And if it caused cancer, the FDA would have to pull it from the market. Like if you found any correlation between any herb and cancer or ill health results, it, the, the, it has to be pulled. Like it just literally has to be pulled. They've done this before with things like ephedrine um, and, and many other nutritional supplement products. So anyway, um, here's the study though. Concerns have been raised about stevia's glycosides uh, might cause genetic mutations in cancer. This stems from a 2008 review in which UCLA toxicologists found in some test tubes and animal studies, steviocide, so not the Reb A, was linked to genetic mutations, chromosome damage, and DNA breakage. However, a different review refuted UCLA's conclusions, finding a complete lack of evidence for genetic toxicity. Uh, they suggested that the first reviews appear to be measuring processes other than direct DNA damage. Artificial sweeteners were banned in Japan, so this is all artificial sweeteners, banned in Japan more than 40 years ago, and since that time, the Japanese have been using stevia, so they banned other artificial sweeteners, but not stevia, in abundance, um, as well as doing abundant research. After more than 40,000 studies, they're convinced stevia is safe. 40,000 studies on stevia. Some have never even found, or some have even found that stevia may even exert any cancer effects. And I'll link that up today at stephencabal.com slash 2846. Okay. So now the next one is stevia, like some artificial sweeteners or regular sugar, will actually spike your blood sugar. Because when your body tastes something sweet, well, it still reacts by producing more blood sugar, like higher blood sugar, or maybe even more insulin, which could drop you into low blood sugar. Here's what it found. Does stevia ex uh, exhibit that same effect? Interestingly, studies suggest it does not. Evidence is mounting that stevia can actually increase insulin sensitivity and improve glucose tolerance, 
even among diabetics. And I'll link up that study. In 2010, a study compared individuals consuming stevia with those consuming aspartame or Splenda, which is sucro uh, sucrose, or actually just sucrose, sorry, not sucralose. Um, those consuming stevia showed lower insulin levels after a meal, as well as more stable blood sugar and safety levels. Nevertheless, this should be evaluated on an individual basis. If you have diabetes, of course, talk with your doctor, right? Okay, so now, does stevia affect cholesterol and blood pressure, right? Because we have to understand if anything affects the pancreas, uh, it could also affect um, blood pressure, it could affect cholesterol, it could affect the liver, and all of these things are related, right? So uh, duodenum, small intestine, liver, uh, gallbladder, pancreas, all, all work together. Okay, so here's what I found. Stevia, reduced oxidized LDL cholesterol, so-called bad cholesterol, and increased good cholesterol, HDL. It also reduced plaque volume. Uh, there was a significant blood pressure reduction, both systolic and diastolic, when using stevia. Stevia seems to exert anti-inflammatory and immu immunomodulating effects. Stevia seems to prevent diabetes-related kidney damage. And it seems to be an effective adjunct therapy against Lyme disease, as I stated before. Okay, so the reason why I did today's show is not to put down any you know, someone that posts on social media about all of these things. I think they're coming from the right place. I think they saw a headline, they see an article, and they're trying to warn others. But also, people are trying to be a contrarian online. It's, it's what gets them followers. People try to share information like they're the only ones that have figured this out. And I think we have to be careful with that. I've always, I've at least I have hoped to try to share with you that I try to build upon 5,000 years of you know, Ayurvedic medicine and 3,000 years of traditional Chinese medicine and building off of great doctors that I've studied with and clinics, clinicians, my mentor, Dr. Pete. We have to be careful about you know, trying to come up with something for the sake of coming up with something to be a contrarian and really hurting people's trust in natural health in the process. So stevia is safe for all intents and purposes. If you have a sensitivity to it, yeah, you have a sensitivity to it. And I understand that. People have a sensitivity to pretty much anything. Like meaning like everyone might have a sensitivity to something. You just kind of have to find what's right for you. But also understand that it's also sometimes the dosage. So if you're using like a pack of stevia, uh, like a little packet or you're using like 20 drops, it's, it's probably just too much. So the goal with any nutritional supplement or anything add-on is that you want to use the lowest possible dosage to get the intended effect. So when I talk about nutritional supplements, I don't talk about mega dosing. I say, yes, use nutritional supplements, but use them in a way that allows you to get benefit from it rather than overdoing anything in the body because everything you put in the body has to be processed. So a lot of people will use stevia instead of sugar because they don't get the blood sugar spike, right? They get all the benefits that I just spoke about. They use it um, as a sweetener in some uh, protein powders or different green drinks, which makes it more palatable to them. Uh, they might use it in their coffee and in their tea. And sometimes they use it in baking, so they don't need to use as much sugar. They use a little stevia and a little sugar, a little stevia and a little bit of honey, like whatever they decide. And I'm not here to tell you how to use it. I just want to be able to be someone, hopefully, that you can trust, that I can um, get rid of a lot of these just myths and untruths, and I can share with you the actual research. So I'm going to put about a dozen studies for you here today. You can find them at stephencabal.com slash 2846. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm here to help. Leave comments below if this was helpful and if there's anything else I can look into for you that you've been hearing, maybe contrary views or you want, to, you want another opinion, all right? So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. I'll talk with you tomorrow on The Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.